It's finally time to take a look at our DS918 Plus. Every time I sit down and, and wanna make a video, I'm like, there's just too much to cover, it's overwhelming. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the specs, uh, tell you what this unit is, and then we're gonna look at the software. It's gonna be a, a few minutes longer than a normal video, but you really wanna stay tuned for the software at the end. Right now, I wanna tell you that it's more than just a box with a bunch of hard drives in it. There's a lot of NAS units out there on the market. You can build your own, you can buy one from several different companies, but this device to me is a lot more than just a bunch of junk inside a box. The main thing for us with Synology is the software package that comes on top of it. Uh, because I mean, yes, it's high quality, the, the build quality and everything is really high quality, but you can go out and get something similar or build your own that's pretty similar in quality. Uh, so the main uh, selling point with Synology, in my opinion, is the ease of use, the fact that it just works, their service, and the fact that everything on the NAS is yours, it's not communicating with the cloud, and the software that they've given us here uh, sort of turns this into your own private cloud server with all of your own applications, like we've got an office suite and everything on here, all your photos, um, ability to access things, ability to share files with people just with one click. All that kind of stuff is built into this unit, uh, and you don't have to worry about anybody looking over your shoulder or harvesting your data to use for marketing or some nonsense like that. So that's one of the main reasons that we've switched over to Synology. All right, so the DS918 Plus. Let's go through the specs real quick. We've got a, a quad-core Celeron in here. It runs at 1.5, but it can boost up to 2.3. And you can do two 4K streams at the same time, supporting H.264, H.265, and all that sort of thing. Um, it'll it'll do that all on the fly. No worries with transcoding. Now you can get up to eight gigabytes of memory in this, and we have two different memory slots, so you can populate it as you see fit. We put some of the 10 terabyte Seagate drives in here. These have a much better track record than their four terabyte drives, so naturally we're going to use that to get as much storage out of this as possible. Now you can expand this. It's a four bay, but you can get up to nine bays with the expansion and just plug them all together. Also, one of the things that's really cool about uh, the 918 Plus is on the bottom there's a, an option where you can get a couple of NVMe SSDs, you know, M.2 NVMe SSDs, and put those in the bottom and use those for caching. And setting that up is as simple as going into the interface and being like, yes, use the NVMe for caching. I mean, it's like, after doing this manually with other systems and pulling my hair out and being like, I really just wanna get back and make my game, the ease of use on this is pretty ridiculous. Soft swappable, on the back you've got uh, two gigabit ethernet ports and that's gonna be nice if you wanna do, you know, maybe some teaming like lag teaming and get dual gigabit coming out of there. Or uh, if you wanted to, you can just use one as a failover. As far as the different file systems you can use, well, you got BTRFS and also ext4. I would probably recommend using BTRFS and then using Synology's uh, RAID technology instead of using the regular RAID. Uh, but if you want to use regular RAID, you can. You got RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, and 10. You can also do JBOT if you like. Synology Hybrid RAID is what we're using on ours, and that's uh, their own RAID technology. I like it. Um, it's similar to the regular RAID, except the fact that you can use any combination of drives you like, and it'll just make one big data pool. I mean, throw a Seagate in there, throw a Western Digital in there, just grab a bunch of hard drives, throw them in this unit, and then use their hybrid RAID technology. BTRFS, you can do snapshots and be happy. The dimensions of this unit, 166 by 199 by 233 in millimeters, and it's 2.8 kilograms. That's without the hard drives in there, of course. You've got two 92 millimeter fans in the back, and it's nice and quiet, 19 decibels. So you can actually put it on the shelf and not have to worry about much noise. 100 watt power supply on the inside. So they get some good technology there with the drives like chilling out and sleeping and all that sort of thing. Now guys, we're gonna go through some of the apps on this. I'm gonna show you around our version of this NAS, you can change the desktop background. It's got a really nice desktop and all that sort of thing. But if you guys want more details on all of the software, we made a video where we went and checked out the Synology event in New York City. Please click on the description to watch that entire thing. If you guys are like in the market for Synology or just curious about that, go ahead and click on that and it'll give you all the information. But now let's cut over to my desktop and uh, check out this unit that we have. This is your uh, DSM desktop. This pops up, you can close it wherever. This is your little help window. Now, if you're familiar with Linux, uh, you're instantly gonna be like, oh, some of these things are interesting. For instance, the package center, uh, very, very similar to a lot of the package managers you see out there on Linux distros. This one has stuff that is geared for this NAS. Uh, and you guys can come on here and grab new bit, bits of software to run on your NAS, and it's extremely easy. Um, that's one of the things I liked about this is there's just really no fuss. So when you first off, uh, first start, you have like your recommended section, and I'll go through a few of these things that we have installed. Uh, you can view everything, and um, a lot of developer tools and that sort of thing. Now, you can run uh, things in Docker right here, so you can pretty much run anything and just enclose it in, uh, enclose it that way, not worry about it. 
So, all right, let's just go through some of the stuff we have installed. I'm not going to cover everything in this video. If you guys want to see everything, you need to go watch um, the video where we cover all the new stuff in 2018. The link is in the description. So check that out. Resource monitor is very handy. Uh, we're also not really going to cover backup, but you have a ton of backup options here. So your control panel, you can go here to set up users and groups, and you can have group folders on the NAS, set up different share folders and that sort of thing. Quick Dynamics, it's super easy to access your NAS from anywhere else in the world. All you have to do is just go to quickconnect.to, uh, then the name of your NAS or whatever, and you're connected to it. It's really, really simple. Use your name and password to log in after that. Then you can configure all sorts of different options for external access. You guys can set up uh, DDNS, and I'll make a video showing you guys how to do that. You can use Synology Server, and then you have all these different Synology uh, URLs. So it'll be like whatever the name of your NAS is, .synology.me, and then you can access this externally really, really easily. So you guys can set that up, or you can use any of your favorite uh, DDNS services, and this is going to help you if you have a, if you don't have a static IP, but you want to be able to connect regardless of your IP address. And then check this out. You can come in here and configure your router, and you can set it up for all sorts of different things, and it will do the port forwarding for you. So first off, it'll come and detect your router. All right, so this will actually go and you know look and see what kind of router you have. We've got a couple different routers here. One's uh, you know. One's a DHCP server, so we're not really worried about it. Also, I don't have UPnP enabled, but you can do that. Um, but it'll, it'll work regardless. So here's our stuff. Check this out. You can come in here and select your router firmware. You know, like what router do you have? It's got a huge database, including, uh, you know, third-party firmwares like DDR, uh, WRT, Tomato. So lots and lots of options here. So pick your router on the list. And then you can actually see which protocol you want to use here for whatever you're setting up. And then you can enter your uh, your router credentials right here. And once you do that, you come in here. Let's say you want to create a new external connection. You can do that. You know, select the type of connection you want to set up, and it will forward the ports for you. So really, really easy to set that up. Now you guys can run this as a DHCP server as well if you want even more control. We have a firewall built in that you can turn on. Security, all kinds of different things. May as well enable that firewall. Keep things nice and secure. Select your interface. We do have the dual, uh, you know, LAN ports, and then you can uh, install your own certificates right here. So if you wanted to have those locally, this can be really handy for a lot of different things. So here you can set up your file servers. It's really easy. Set up your FTP, TFTP, whatever. Um, I'm not using FTP, but you can set up, you know, SFTP down here. It's like SSH, all that cool stuff. R sync is also available, so you can keep things backed up one to one. Really, really easy to do. So there's all your options there uh, for file syncing. And then you can set up, set up your different shared folders. These are going to become your shares like on your NAS when you open it up. So those basically are, you know, the different shares you're going to have to set up and, and map, whatever. So we have all these. Some of them we don't really need, but, you know. I suppose there's a few more of the applications here. So if you guys want to monitor stuff, I mean, you can monitor everything from your disk groups here. Don't have any. There's different volumes. There. We're using Synology Hybrid RAID. Uh, Hybrid RAID is great because it'll work with, you know, any combination of drives, even though we're using the same drive. But... Um, you know, I like what they're doing. Also, we've got BTRFS going on here. So there's our disks hanging out in there. Seagates are awesome. You can monitor your LUNs. We don't have any iSCSI LUNs, of course. We're not doing anything that crazy just yet. And then our SSD cache we have not turned on yet, but uh, that's something <laughs> I'm going to plug in and turn on. I should have that already ready to go. But it's so easy to just set that up right here without any fuss. Now, we have a few different ways to do backup. You have a hyper backup, but you also have snapshots uh, if you're using BTRFS. And it's really powerful and awesome. I can make a totally separate video about that. But just know that we do have snapshot uh, replication here, and it does not eat up a ton of hard drive space. Audio station is something I really love. This maps to your audio folder. Uh, and you can access this from anywhere, including your phone. So now you have access to all of your music. So that's really cool. And uh, you can also set this up to um, to work with UPnP and that sort of thing. And one of the things that's really cool is you can also give access to this um, per user. So the, of course the admin has access, but like, you know, if I want other people to have access to this just so they can stream music, sure, I can go in here and be like, okay, yeah, you've got access. All right, Download Station is a, basically a download manager. You pick your folder. Uh, but it doesn't just work with regular files. It can also work with torrents. It looks like a little torrent application, but it works with everything. Um, it downloads things directly to your NAS. So you can set up a whole bunch of downloads, turn off your main rig, and they'll all be working right here in the background on your NAS. Uh, Media Server and Video Station are pretty cool. Um, Video Station is uh, an interface that's going to be familiar to people who like, you know, Plex Media Server and that sort of thing. I don't really uh, have a lot of, you know, I'm mostly playing video games, so I don't really have much media. But yeah, you can set it up 
um, throw all your all your stuff on here. Put your movies, your TV shows, whatever your own videos on here, and it will organize itself nicely. All right, moments is a way to organize uh, your photos, and it will blow your frost giant mind. So I just imported a whole bunch of photos. I'm using moments mostly for like cell phone photos and just goofing off photos. But there's some artificial intelligence that's actually running on your device. It's not in the cloud. This is actually all on your device. So they're not actually harvesting your information. And with each new update, they're adding in, uh, you know, new artificial intelligence to better search through your stuff. But already right now, I've just, in, you know, imported a bunch of my stuff. Let me type a concert. And check that out. It was able to detect that these photos are from a concert. How does it know? They're blurry, dark, and... <laughs> <laughs> have horned hands is that how it knows I don't know so that's that search let's try um, food I don't really take any people shots yeah it's really doing a good it even knew that this was food oh come on when I make a chicken salad sandwich I make a f***ing chicken salad sandwich so anyway moments is really handy because if you're looking for that one picture screen maybe there we go Sc screen I type screen and it's like oh here these are screens aren't they why, yes, they are screens. Not the projector. But you guys can see it makes your life a lot easier when you're looking for that one picture or something. Otherwise, it's organized by date. And it just drops them in there. If you have a bunch of people shots and you want it to be like, you know, hey, this is Steve, you can tag a photo with Steve. It will go through your entire library and match that face and be like, here's all the pictures of Steve. So if you're looking for that certain picture of Steve, that can make your life easier. Now, photo station is a little different. This is geared more toward professionals, uh, for professionals who want to organize. And uh, both of these programs, you can actually send external links to people. So right from moments here, I can grab, like, say, like, I want to show someone these damn pickled vegetables that were delicious. I can come up here and get a share link. It's going to share this thing. Copied. It's going to actually share this thing to anyone I send this link to. And they're going to be connected securely to my NAS. Just like I'm sharing something on Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever. Y'all can follow me on Instagram. Maybe I should learn y'all how to cook. So there's a chat application, right? You open up the chat application. Actually more full featured, in my opinion, than Hangouts. You can get the Windows application if you want to as well. I've got the Windows application on my computer. In each individual chat. General, go to my general chat here. And so check this out. We got this one chat right here. Let's say I wanted to reply just to this, this picture I posted of uh, this mug. Well, I can come over here and start a new thread inside this thread. So we have threaded comments. Now, another cool thing about chats is um, you can set up different folders and make them accessible to different groups. So you can have a group chat for each, uh, you know, area of your business or your family, you know, whatever. There's a calendar here. I haven't put much on it yet. We just got this set up. Uh, very similar to Google Calendar, and you can sync it up with, with the popular calendars out there on the market. But, you know, you got your, it's, it's going to be extremely familiar to anyone to use used Google Calendar or Office. So there you go. Set all that stuff up. And there's an entire um, collaboration suite that has all the Office applications. There's our snapshot replication. We have not set that up just yet, but that's like top of my list to do after I get my SSDs installed and stuff. Um, but you guys can set up snapshots, schedule snapshots, um, and do it per folder or per, per share, I suppose. Hey, for your LUNs, too. Now I'm going to show you Synology Drive. This is a desktop app. And what this does is each user can have their own uh, drive. It gives them their own um, folder inside your homes folder. So everyone's going to have their own home, just like, you know, if you have a Win Windows PC and you have multiple users, they each have their own home folder. It's basically what this is, but you can sync it up between all your different computers. So you can just install drive, sign in with your username and password, and you have access to all your key files. Uh, you can set up some syncs and that sort of thing. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. And I've got a folder synced at my home computer to here. So it's working out just fine. All right, if you open up File Station, you have access to everything depending on your, you know, I guess your permission level. We're the admins, so we can do whatever we want. All right, so I'm going to open up the doc right now. It's not going to work one-to-one um, -one with um, certain templates and that sort of thing, but most regular docs will work. All right, so I've um, got this doc open right here, opening up in Synology Office. i got my margins all screwed up, but the cool thing about uh, this is now that you have it here in Synology Office, you can be collaborating on this with other people on the NAS wherever they are, and you can be working on this at the same time, just like a Google Doc. There's a lot of typos in here, guys, so don't, don't mind that. Another really cool, cool thing they've just added this year is slides. Um, this is like a PowerPoint style program, um, and it'll work. You can import PowerPoints into this. You guys can do collaborative work on slide-based documents, so that's really cool. So I've just jumped back to Drive now. So there was Office. So as you can see, there's a ton of stuff you can do 
with the Synology NAS, and it's not just about the hardware. A lot of this is about the awesome software. They have a huge team making software. So that's the reason that we've moved over here is because now this stuff works. If we need to do something really nerdy, we can do it, and we can do it fast, and we can do it well, and then we can get back to working on our video game and that sort of thing. I'm highly recommending these Synology units. They're not just boxes full of hard drives. They are boxes with hard drives, um, good components, and really awesome software. Uh, so that's it, guys. I cannot recommend this enough. Uh, and I want to say something to uh, a few of the elitists out there. I can already hear you guys being warriors on your keyboard and typing that, no, you must do everything the hard way. Um, that's fine. There's a lot of people out there who are totally fine setting everything up and doing it the hard way. Um, but let me tell you something. You can get extremely nerdy with these Synology devices. They've just made it really easy. And that's not a bad thing because, you know, if you want to spend hundreds of hours tinkering, then you're a tinkerer. That's fine. There are some people who just want their file system and their server to work so that they can get other things done. Like we have this now and we're just going to be working on our video game and this is going to do its job in the background and everyone's going to be happy. So that's the main thing for us. I want you guys to stay tuned. I've got some more videos coming up. Uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is setting up a DDNS server and then um, setting up our own URL, Flaming Laser Sword, and we're going to have that point to our Synology NAS so that we can go anywhere pretty much in the world and just access Flaming Laser Sword. And then, hey, we're on our NAS. We can even map a network drive to our computer using Flaming Laser Sword. So check that out. That's going to be in the next video. It's going to be a little bit more complicated than this, but it's still easy. There's just a lot of steps. So we'll see you guys in video two and watch for more videos. Be sure to uh, grab one of our mice over at epicpants.com and one of our t-shirts as well. These have a 3360 sensor. I think you guys will like them if you like precision. Do you guys like that? Yes, you do. All right, bye everybody.